Hi students, thanks for tuning in. We're going to take a look at an introduction to motion and these four topics. Scalars versus vectors, distance versus displacement, instantaneous versus average speed, and average speed versus average velocity. You should have a blank sheet of paper out in front of you. You should call these intro to motion notes and you should write down some of the key information as we go along. So here first, scalar versus vector. A scalar is a quantity that has a magnitude only, no direction. So for example, temperature, mass, and speed. Another word for saying magnitude is scale, and that's what the word scalar comes from. A vector, on the other hand, is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. So force, you push or pull in a certain direction. Velocity, you are traveling in a certain direction. And acceleration, your velocity is changing in a certain direction. Now let's take a look at distance versus displacement. And if I'm going too fast, pause the video as we go to give yourself a chance to get caught up. You should definitely write down those definitions that we just had. So distance is a scalar. The symbol is capital, the symbol is uh, lowercase d, and it means the length of movement. In other words, how far has something moved. Displacement has a different symbol. This triangle in front is called delta. It's a Greek letter. It means change. Change in x. x represents position, as shown down here in the bottom. When we talk about change in position, we compare the final position to the initial position. And by definition, this is the change in position of an object, how far and which way. So displacement is a vector. Let's take a look at an example. You don't have to copy this example, but I would like you to write a summary of what the main point of it is. You have a girl riding her bike. She's riding in one, one line, so you could say it's one-dimensional motion. She's starting at the zero. She travels two kilometers to the right, three kilometers to the left. What is her distance traveled? It is the sum of those two, five kilometers. What is her displacement? Well. She starts at zero, she ends at negative one. So there's two ways of looking at this. You could say her displacement is x final negative one minus x initial zero, and negative one minus zero is negative one. Or you could look at it and say, well, she went forward two, and she went backward three, and that's a total change of position of two minus three, or negative one. So the answer is her displacement was negative one kilometers because she ends up one kilometer behind where she started. When we talk about displacement now, we can see that it has direction. If you are being displaced to the right, we would say it's positive. Displaced to the left is negative. Moving on. Instantaneous speed versus average speed. Instant instantaneous speed is how fast at any moment in time. For example, whatever your car speedometer says. But average speed is distance over time, so, for example, if you're driving 100 miles in two hours, that means you have an average speed of 50 miles per hour. Your speed might not be constant the whole time. It may fluctuate all the way from, for example, 40 miles per hour up to 70 miles per hour at some point. Um, it really could be doing anything, but the distance divided by the time will give you whatever the average of all those times, all those speeds are. Lastly, let's take a look at average speed versus average velocity. The equation for average speed can be written three ways. And here are those three ways in red. The one that we're most commonly used to seeing is v equals d over t. And I'll point out that v can represent speed or velocity. But you can simply cross multiply this equation, and now you have distance equals speed times time. Or now you can divide both sides of the equation by v and get time by itself. Time equals distance divided by speed. So there are three ways of writing the equation for average speed, depending on which of the three variables you want to isolate. The equation for average velocity has one difference. We're using displacement, delta x, instead of d. So that's all we did. We went back to the equation, and we just made that substitution. But there is a fundamental difference here. Displacement, delta x, can be positive or negative, as we saw with the girl riding her bike. So velocity can be positive or negative, meaning moving to the left or moving to the right. And usually we call to the right positive and to the left negative, like a number line. The units for speed or velocity have any unit for length of any unit for time. 
um, they have any unit uh, for length over any unit for time. This little typo there. So meters, miles, kilometers, those are our units for length. Seconds, hours, those are units for time. So let's take a look at an example. You should summarize this example in your notes. Again, you don't have to copy it. Um, what is her average speed? What is her average velocity? So it's the bicycle is moving two kilometers forward and then three kilometers backwards. Her average speed is distance over time. So five kilometers divided by 0 0.5 hours is 10 kilometers per hour. What is her average velocity? We have to remember that her displacement was negative one divided by half an hour gives us negative two kilometers per hour. And I'm specifying to the left here because it is a negative velocity and that does mean to the left which also reinforces the idea that velocity is a vector. It has direction. So at the end of your notes, I would like you to summarize the difference between scalars and vectors, distance and displacement, instantaneous and average speed, and average speed and average velocity. You should write one sentence that explains the difference between those four. And also take the time to write down whatever questions you would like to ask about in class tomorrow. And there are two practice questions in the next slides. Please answer the practice questions on the next two slides using the link given in EDU. Use your paper in front of you for scratch work, but you'll put your answers in the link. It's, it will take you to a Google form. So here's the first question. So for your response, go ahead and pause it and answer this on your paper, and then you're going to be typing it into the Google form. And here is the multiple choice question. And we'll go over any questions you want to go over tomorrow in class. And with the Google form, I can get an idea of what your areas of are that you would that we should spend some more time on. All right, thank you for doing that. We'll see you tomorrow in class.